What's good? Brian Tong here and welcome to the Apple Bits for everything good and bad inside the world of Apple. And let's get to the show. And this is what the new 2018 iPhones could look like. Boom! Pictures from phone leaker Benjamin Geskin show off what appear to be dummy units of the 6.5 inch OLED iPhone 10 Plus, if that's what it ends up being called, and the 6.1 inch LCD iPhone with a single lens camera. You know, it always feels a little different when you see them in hand compared to renders. These dummies are usually produced based on schematics that my Chinese relatives and suppliers have, and they can get pretty close to the final product. Now, Apple is expected to hold its annual September event to officially unveil the new 2018 iPhones, where we expect to see three models in total, including an updated 5.8 inch OLED iPhone for the new year as well. All right, in iPad news, it looks like the new iPad Pro will be getting courage. A new report from Mako Takara says Apple is likely to ditch the headphone jack with this year's iPad Pro models. And you know what time it is. Let's get ready to dunk go! I could have done it a whole lot longer. Now you all know I love everything iPad Pro, but I'm not mentally ready yet to accept this is happening yet. I know Apple has the AirPods, other companies have their own Bluetooth headphones, and we know Apple is planning to release their own premium over-the-ear Bluetooth headphones for 2019, so this is coming whether you and I like it or not. Or you're that person in the comments that's saying, wireless is here already, get with the times, Tong. Okay, you have a point. Now the report also says the iPad Pros will be getting slightly smaller in size with the new 10.5 inch iPad Pro measuring at 247.5 millimeters tall by 178.7 millimeters wide while being six millimeters thick. That's compared to the current 10.5 inch, that's 250.6 by 174.1 millimeters and 6.1 millimeters thick. Now the new 12.9 inch iPad Pro, that's my baby, will get a more drastic reduction in size measuring 280 by 215 millimeters and 6.4 millimeters thick compared to the current generations, 305.7 by 220.6 and a 6.9 millimeter thickness. Now that's smaller and uh, I like that, but both the iPad Pro models are expected to ditch the physical home button for the true depth camera system and Face ID. Now Mako Takara also supports earlier claims that Face ID will only work in portrait mode and not landscape which, if true, is absolutely stupid to me when the iPad is used just as much, if not more, in landscape mode. Now the report adds the iPad Pros will use a diamond cut manufacturing process for both the front and the back, which means we could see a beveled design similar to the iPhone SE. And you know, I thought about it at first, this might seem like a reach, but a purported leaked CAD design from Steve Hemistoffer shows a completely redesigned back surface for the iPad Pro with a design very similar to, you guessed it, the iPhone SE. You can even see its subtle bezel along the entire edge in the CAD file. I want to reiterate, this isn't confirmed, but it could also mean a first for the iPad with an all glass back, moving away from its curved aluminum body of the past. And if it's glass, like how could I not possibly jump ahead and think this could possibly be the first iPad to support wireless charging and I don't know about you, but I just peed myself. It also features a relocated iPad smart connector right above the lightning connection at the bottom of the iPad. And that would be a major change from its location on the side that was used for keyboard cases, transferring data and power at the same time. But the smart connector really didn't do much beyond that. It's also a strong indicator that older keyboard cases will likely not be compatible with new iPads. So yeah, time to spend another 120 bucks plus on a new keyboard case. Thanks, Apple. But let's get back to the talk about wireless charging. We know we're still waiting for the air power mat. That's just another product being delayed. I say, hey, Apple, take your time, get it right, but stop announcing products that come out nine months to a year after your initial announcement. It's not a good look, and it's becoming the new norm for you. And that's a bad Apple. Ah! But a recent Apple patent filing shows that they want every Apple device to be able to wirelessly charge with each other. Now, Apple engineers have come up with plans to put wireless chargers in MacBooks, iPads, and iPhones so that they could all charge each other or an Apple Watch. The patent drawings show these areas that are circles representing charging pad locations on Apple hardware. 
There are three on this iPad design where an iPhone could be laid down vertically or horizontally, or an example where you could even stack an Apple Watch on top of an iPhone on top of an iPad like an Apple sandwich. I'd eat that. And this drawing shows a potential nine charging spots on a MacBook Pro's rear shell or on the inside, three below the keyboard that would allow you to charge your devices on its surface as well. I love this. Now, Apple first filed a patent on this idea back in 2015 before the iPhone had wireless charging, but the company filed a continuation this spring and they're not easing up on this idea. Again, not every patent ends up happening in both the new iPads, potentially, potentially supporting wireless charging and iPhones and Apple Watch already doing it. We're getting close to making this a reality. In a quick update, the fifth beta is for Apple's latest software with iOS 12, watchOS 5, tvOS 5, and macOS Mojave have arrived. They're all available for developers right now, but if you wanted a little gem early and don't want to install Mojave on your computer, you can get all the new wallpapers that were released with the fifth beta at this link on screen, thanks to 9 to 5 mac who posted them all with an assortment of swirly colors, that's cool, deserts, flowers, and geometric designs. How purdy. And if money is no object for you, check this out. Los Angeles-based luxury company Brick is offering a pair of 24 karat gold AirPods with a total of two carats of diamonds on them for $10,000. They're coated in two layers of gold and hand polished too. Thanks guys. Now for all of the peons that can't afford them, the gold AirPods without diamonds will cost just under $5,000. They're also available in 18 karat rose gold or 950 platinum at that price as well. And hey, someone will buy them and then lose one of them. All right, that's it for this week. This is my new home on YouTube, so subscribe, hit that bell to get all the good stuff when it drops. And if you want a deeper dive, you've got to check out my Apple Bits XL Audio Podcast where we really explore the stories and topics a whole lot more in depth. All right, thanks so much for watching, and we'll catch y'all next time for all the bits and bites inside the world of Apple. Peace.